That transition from uh, Team Nowhere's gymnasium, right, their training room, to that and just it being in rubble, it hits different. It really does. And um, I really feel like Season 2, by the time, honestly, even before it ends, has a really good shot at putting Megalobox in my top 10. I really feel that way. The writing quality is in a completely different league of its own. You have most sequels where they just kind of carry on and do the same thing. I walked into season two thinking it would be another tournament, right? And they would introduce some new characters and there'd be some emotional struggle. I wasn't expecting to shatter everything about this dynamic and have it work because there's a really big risk of killing off and destroying a family that you've grown to know and love in the first season. Because, like, how many people would walk into season two of Megalbox saying, oh, I hope Nanbu dies, I hope that Sachio hates Joe. No, no one would think that, because how can you write that to be compelling writing that makes sense, given everything they went through? Well, a death. A simple death of a man who's reached the end of his life, and a different man, Joe, unwilling to give up and wanting to fight, wanting to win prize money, to give him a surgery, to give him even more time, because the idea of death is something you don't want to accept. Based on, like, personal experience with my own family, this episode hit extra hard, and if we go back to the first episode, if I'm not mistaken, there's a radio that plays at the very beginning of the episode that talks about how Joe lost that match, the match that he was going to use the prize money to give Nanbu a second chance, right, hopefully, the surgery would give him more time. So, once again, highlighting the writing, where you would probably expect Joe would win, he would have the money in his hand, he would rush to the hospital, and Nanbu would be dead, and then Sachi would be pissed off because all he wanted was to have you next to him, rather than you trying to win money to force his body into even more pain for a couple extra weeks, right? I mean, it's something that you completely understand where every character came from. A man like Joe, unable to accept that the strongest person in his life is content with going out because he wants him to live. And honestly, the desire of the body, if someone has the determination, they can live a long time even going through horrible, horrible diseases and illnesses but you can't change the inevitable. So if Nambu really, really wanted to, if he got that surgery, there was a chance that maybe he could have survived a decent more time, but it would have been very, very painful. And he was content going out with his family by his side, even if he looked lonely when characters like Sacho left. And Joe being unwilling, and I think seeing how the flashbacks have happened up until this point, there's been little snippets of Sachio saying, you killed Nambu, right? And then you'd see Nambu in the bed saying, oh, you know, my luck ran out once I met you. I thought that was a fight. That's what everyone thought, right? And then see a single person speculate that, you know, when they shook hands in the hospital that it was him, you know, needing to go to a surgery. But the idea that Joe actually encouraged him to take that risk, I mean, it's just very interesting because the way the flashbacks are structured, not only with the gray, the black and white tone that they use for the filtering, right? But even just like how you get snippets and seeing so many different characters grow up and how Joe literally has nowhere left to go. Sure, he could go back to Chief's village. I'm sure he'll always be welcomed there with open arms. But that would break the promise he made to Chief in order to tackle his own problem. Sachio being someone who's not fit to be a Megal boxer, but is doing it anyway. But it's just, there's so many pieces that just crush my heart. And to see that they needed Joe there for so long, but... I mean, I think once, I feel like if it's not next week, it'll be the week after. I mean, once he ended up dead after he probably lost that match feeling like a failure, I mean, Nambu was probably dead. I don't think he ever got to say goodbye, which is why the guilt has kind of haunted him for so long. And based on his addiction to painkillers, I wouldn't be surprised if he had even more damage done to his body in that extra match, which then caused the addiction to painkillers while then also having the hallucinations of the kind of past haunting you. He did abandon everyone, and it's something that he shouldn't have done, but it's one of those situations where, put into Joe's situation, it's very easy to see yourself make the same mistakes and snap the way he does, but I mean, for someone like Sasha who is recognizing that this is a man who's reached the end, he wants to be by his family and friends, he finds it to be selfish that other people can't let him go, which is something that's very hard, especially when someone in your life is going out. Do you always see it within families? I know I've seen it personally, some people not able to accept, wanting them to continue to push on, try everything they can, where other people see that, you know, they gave it their all, they fought as long as they could, 
but now it's time to go peacefully, right? It's a very painful type of storytelling, and I don't know what the hell the writers were doing when they crafted this season, but holy shit, if they could do it again for a third season, I would be jumping for joy. I have a feeling that with the way this show's going, I'm going to leave season 2 saying the same thing I said for season 1. I don't need any more anime. I'm content it's a satisfying finale, even if it breaks my heart and Joe ends up dying like I think he will. I feel like if they announce a season 3, 3 years down the line again, I'll be like, you know what? They hooked me once time before, let's do it again. I mean, just the way this show has had so little action in comparison to the first season, it's seriously a story that you would typically see in a long-running type show where you have this long arc of just depression after depression. And the fact that season two was willing to say, like, we'll show you some boxing, but for the most part, we're going to show you all your favorite characters depressed beyond words and them hating Joe. There's no way you could have convinced me this plotline would work walking into this season if somehow you could have spoiled me. Because to shatter that relationship that was so strong by the end, it's disappointing. I don't know where we're going from here because it does feel like we will have one last championship. And the natural progression would probably be Joe training Sachio, but is Sachio really capable of being a fighter? Maybe that is the story they're going to go, but I mean, if Joe gets back in the ring, the death flags will be going off beyond words. The alarms will be sound across the globe. But if he's training Sachio, I think there could be something good happening there. But to see the reunion between everyone, I mean, it's understandable why everyone hates him. And it's understandable why Joe did what he did. And I think that's the great thing about the writing here is that rather than just saying Joe's a shitty person or Joe was in the right, you see everyone's perspectives and you especially see those like Sacho and why they were so mad. I mean, it's just painful. It's really painful and honestly, I'm not ready for the remainder of the flashback. I'm really not. I'm sure there will be more flashbacks even after like Nanbu's ended up dead. I'm sure we'll get to see some from Sacho's perspective like saving them from the flood and things like that. But to go from them all eating dinner and you know, just having a great life to then ending up in orphanages to, you know, some growing up that have some pretty successful lives like chefs to, you know, a reporter. But it's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is. And the emotional writing, I didn't think I was going to come up here and say, holy shit, they managed to match the emotional swings of last week with Chief's death and victory saving his people. But they did so. This is a world that is so compelling and I don't know where we're going from here. I really, really don't. And yeah, this was another 10 out of 10 episode and uh, is etching its way up into my top 10. I really feel that way. I mean, I said it last week, the remainder of this season could have been absolute ass and I would have said season 2 was a compelling addition to the Megalobox story. It feels like we're just getting started. I feel like it's going to be divided into three acts. The first act was clearly Chief. The second act is clearly trying to rebuild what he can, the third act being probably some form of tournament and wherever that kind of leads us, right? Hopefully, it'll be something like getting money to, you know, help other people, maybe the people he wronged, I don't know, but we'll see where it goes. Let me know your thoughts, feelings down below, your thoughts and speculations, and uh, how emotional are you watching it? Because I gotta say, I was pretty damn emotional myself. If you enjoyed the video, like to show you support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.